A summer camp offers canoeing, oh, a summer camp offers canoeing, rock climbing, and archery. The following Venn diagram shows the types of activities campers like. So we went through ones like this before. Remember, we have to do bracket first. So we're going to do R or C. Remember, this isn't an AND because if I try and write AND with it, it looks stupid. So it is not AND. It is OR. And what shape is OR on a Venn diagram? OR is a snowman. It is. OR is a snowman. AND is an eyeball. So we're going to look for the OR snowman. R or C. Remember the snowman is two circles, not parts of the circle cut off. Snowman is round circles. So I'm going to add everything up in there. So I'm going to get these. I don't feel like doing this in my head and messing up. I messed up on the thing in the math one. Other math one. So we're going to get 20 plus 8, which is 28, plus 15 or 11 plus 5 plus 3. 17, so plus 20. 64, 20 plus 16 plus 28, 64. So we get 64 of them, right? If we just had R or C, but we don't. So what do we have? We have R or C and then not A. Remember I told you when it's super confusing? What do we do? We shade separately, right? So I'm going to shade, I'm going to highlight, R or C. Wow, big highlighter. I'm going to go back. Go back. Okay, small. R or C. Snowman. I don't even look at what symbols between the R or C and the A dot. I shade them separately. Remember, so this is R or C. I shade in yellow. And then I'm going to shade not A in blue. So I'm going to go to A. I'm going to shade around A and everything outside of A. Inside the box. So not A. Should be happy there. Okay, now I look to the symbol. If the symbol is an AND, I look where it's double shaded. Remember that rule? If the symbol is an OR, anywhere shaded, I add up. So this symbol is an AND, because I can write the word AND. So I go to double shading. Blue and yellow make green. So I'm going to add up 17 plus 11 plus 20. And we get 48. Tanya recorded the 16 possible sums that occur when you roll two four sided dice. Okay? So let's make an array. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, just so we can see what this is going to be. So she did the 16 sums. Sum is, now just two, addition. So, one plus one is two, two plus one is three, two plus one is four, four plus one is five, two plus one is three, two plus two is four, two plus three is five, two plus four is six, three plus one is four, three plus two is five, three plus three is six, three plus four is seven, 4 plus 1 is 5, 4 plus 2 is 6, 4 plus 3 is 7, 4 plus 4 is 8. So the different sums are 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 4, 5, 5, 5, 5, 6, 6, 6, 7, 7, and 8. So S represents all the possible sums. So that's 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. L represents all the sums less than 4. So 2 and 3, not less than or equal to, so just 2 or 3, not including 4. G are all the sums greater than 4. So it's going to be 5, 6, 7, 8. And then F are all the sums equal to 4. So we want to know, describe the relationship between L and G. L are all the sums less than 4. 
g are all the sums greater than 4. So, let's go through this. L and G are complements. In order for L and G to be complements, they have to contain all of the elements in the universal set when you look at both of them. So L has 2, 3. G has 5, 6, 7, 8. In order for G to be a complement of L, it would have to have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is not true. L is a subset of G. That means L, everything in L is in G. Is that true? L has 2, 3. Actually, L is not in G at all. So that's not true. G is a subset of L. Everything in G is in L. Uh, G has 5, 6, 7, 8. L has none of those. So that's not true. L and G are disjoint. Disjoint means nothing in common. Remember how I prove that? I go L and G equals the empty set. Nothing in common, which is true, so it's B. Number three, consider the following two sets. C equals negative 10, negative 8, negative 6, negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. B is negative 9, negative 6, negative 3, 0, 3, 6, 9, 12. So they want C and B. So what's in C and in B? What's in C and in B? It's actually in them is negative 6, 0, negative 9 isn't, negative 6 is, negative 3 isn't, 0 is, 3 isn't, 6 is, 9 isn't, 12 isn't. So negative 6, 0, and 6 are the answer. But what did I ask you for? The number of elements in. So how many of them are there? 3. Next question. So, this one says, what does the shaded region represent? A or B is the snowman. Is that the snowman? Is the snowman shaded? Nope. A and B is the eyeball. Is the eyeball shaded? Nope. Now I need A or not B, or not A and B. Okay. Not A... None of these are right. That's pretty funny. What is the actual one? It's A and not B. Good job, Lef. You're welcome. <laughs> a, B, C, and B are all wrong. Because this is A and not B. So take out the B part. You're welcome. I hope you fought over that. Okay. That's a little payback for your talky-talky in my class. All right. Number five. In a class of 32 students, 20 students had phys ed, 14 students had art, 3 students had neither art or phys ed, phys ed or art. So remember I told you when you're given the total, you're given the two separately, and the neither, you can find the and. How did we do that? We went 20 plus 14, so the single ones. 20 students in ed, 14 students in art, 3 students in neither. We added them up. We get 37. 20 plus 14 is 34, plus 3 is 37. However, there are only 32 kids in the class, and we're saying there's 37. Well, that doesn't make sense. So I take 37 and I subtract off the kids, 32, and that means that there's five in both. There's five that actually overlap. So determine the number of students in both phys ed and art, five. Determine the number of students in art only. Well, I'm going to have to draw my Venn diagram. So I draw a block always. Draw my two circles. I have phys ed, PE, and art. In the middle, I have five. On the outside, I have three. In the whole PE circle, I should have 20. I already have five. So PE only would be 15. In the whole art circle, I should have 14. I already have five, so I should have nine. If I add up all these numbers, I better get 32. So 15 plus five is 20, plus nine is 29, plus three is 32, so that looks good. Now, determine the number of students in art only would be 9. 
Now you're going to get handed out your notes because we're starting the new unit, which is polynomials. Remember your unit test for this set theory is on Monday next week. Our third unit is exploring probability. So we have definitions for probability. Experimental probability, the experimental probability event A taking place is represented as probability of A. And what you do is you do the number of A over the number total. So where NA is the number of times event A occurred, and NT is the total number of trials in the experiment. For example, what is the experimental probability of getting ahead when flipping a coin? That would be probability of a head. How many heads are on a coin? One. How many? That, so that, I can go N of H. I'll show that. Over N of T. The number of heads over the number of trials, the number of total. Number of heads on a coin? One. Number of sides on a coin or number total? That's options? Two. So the experimental probability of flipping a head on a coin is one out of two, or a half. We decide to flip a coin 10 times. Out of those 10 times, we got heads 7 times. So we get n of h equals 7, n of t equals 10. So this isn't, this isn't the experimental probability. This is the theoretical probability, the 1 half. The experimental probability depends on what you do. So here's an experiment. We decide to flip a coin 10 times. Out of those 10 times, we got a head 7 times. So head 7 times out of total 10 times. So our experiment would be 7 out of 10. But we know, theoretically, it's 1 out of 2. Does that mean that you have a 1 out of 2 chance of flipping a head? Yep. But could it be higher when you actually do an experiment? Yeah, this one was 7 out of 10. So sample space. All of the possible outcomes. For example, six-sided die space is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Those are all the options or the different elements in the set of a six-sided die. Theoretical probability. So this is what we did with that heads, one out of two. The theoretical probability of event A is represented by P of A equals N of A over N of S, where N of A represents the number of favorable outcomes and N of S represents the total number of outcomes in the sample space, where all outcomes are equally likely. So for example, what is the theoretical probability of flipping a head on a coin? N of H equals one. How many is the sample space is two? So that's where we get the theoretical, which is a half. But experimental doesn't have to follow theoretical. Because if you try it out, you might not actually have a 1 in 2 chance of getting ahead. You might have a higher chance because the A's just flipped heads. Or you might have a lower chance. In junior high, you were exposed to the following probability question. A six-sided die is rolled. What is the probability of rolling a 2? So if you want the probability of rolling a 2, you're going to do the number of 2's over the number of total or sample space, okay? How many twos are on a six-sided die? One. How many sides are on it? Six. So you have a one in six chance of rolling a two, theoretically. Good thing is we don't do experimental on tests. It's always theoretical. A six-sided die is rolled. What is the probability of rolling a prime number? For those of you who keep thinking one is a prime number, remember it's not. It's not a prime number because the definition of a prime number is a number that has two different factors at maximum and at minimum, where one only has one factor, it's the number one. So the prime numbers start at the first, the first prime number is the only even number, remember that? So two, three, four isn't prime because it's actually composite because it has more than two factors. One isn't prime because it actually doesn't have two factors. Uh, so I have 2, 3, 4 isn't, 5 is a prime number because 1 times 5 gives me 5, and 6 isn't prime because I have 1, 6, and then 2 and 3. So if I want the probability of rolling a prime number, I would do probability of prime equals the probability of prime over the probability of total or probability of x sample space. So how many primes are there? 3. How many total sides? 6, which I can reduce to a half. When I flip um, or roll a dice, six-sided dice, I actually have a one in two chance of rolling a prime number. Number three, a, circu a circular spinner is divided up into four equal sectors. So we have a circle spinner. Pretend these are equal. I'm not very good at it. Wow, that's terrible. Ah, it looks 
the same. We're going to pretend that those are all four equal spaces. One is labeled clubs, one is labeled diamonds, one is labeled hearts, one is labeled spades. When it is spun, determine the probability it lands on hearts. So we want probability of hearts. Well, how do we figure that out? We do the number of hearts over the number total. It should be the N factor. It should be N of C and N of C, sorry. So the number of he hearts is 1. There's 1 of the 4 pieces that are hearts. And the total number of sample spaces, including the heart, you can include the heart one, is four. So I have a one in four chance of spinning and landing on a heart, which makes sense if you look at the spinner. Number four, two coins are tossed and the number of heads is counted. What is the probability of obtaining two heads? So we want the probability of a head and the probability of getting a head on a coin. Now, it's not or, because that would be probability of head or a probability of a head. So then that doesn't guarantee you'd have two heads. So it has to be an and. We know from the last couple of units, and means, especially the first unit, and means to multiply. So we're going to multiply. What's the probability of getting a head? One out of two. What's the probability of getting a head? One out of two. So when you multiply them, it's one out of four. So the probability of getting a head and a head is one out of four. Which makes sense, because if I do the outcome, I have heads and then tails. So this would be coin one, I could flip a head or a tail. Then off of this one, if I got a head, the next coin I could get a head or a tail. The next coin I could get a head or a tail. This would be coin two. Remember we did this in the first unit as well. So we did it with other things for the tree diagram. So if I need a head and a head, that's one outcome. Out of how many outcomes? So that's one outcome. This is another outcome, so two. Three, four. I could get a head, a head, a head, then a tail, a tail, then a head, or a tail, then a tail. So it's one out of four. So it shows it was a tree diagram as well. So two dice are rolled. What is the probability of rolling a sum greater than eight? So when we roll two dice in the quiz, we made a four by four array. This one, we're rolling two normal dice with a six by six. So I'm going to go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to show all the sums. If I add up all of these, this is the best way to do it to see all the sums and not miss any. If you make an array, this is going to be a six by six array. So I want sum. Sum is addition. So I go one plus one and I get a two. And I'm doing this in a different color. So that I don't count um, the black ones, because those are just the size of the dice look like. So 1 plus 1 is 2, 1 plus 2 is 3, 1 plus 3 is 4, 1 plus 4 is 5, 1 plus 5 is 6, 1 plus 6 is 7. 2 plus 1 is 3, 2 plus 2 is 4, 2 plus 3 is 5, 2 plus 4 is 6, 2 plus 5 is 7, 2 plus 6 is 8. 3 plus 1 is 4, 3 plus 2 is 5, 3 plus 3 is 6. 3 plus 4 is 7, 3 plus 5 is 8, 3 plus 6 is 9, 4 plus 1 is 5, 4 plus 2 is 6, 4 plus 3 is 7, 4 plus 4 is 8, 4 plus 5 is 9, 4 plus 6 is 10. 5 plus 1 is 6, 5 plus 2 is 7, 5 plus 3 is 8, 5 plus 4 is 9, 5 plus 5 is 10, 5 plus 6 is 11, 6 plus 1 is 7, 6 plus um, 2 is 8, 6 plus 3 is 9, 6 plus 4 is 10, 6 plus 5 is 11, 6 plus 6 is 12. So if we add up all the red ones, there's going to be 36 outcomes. If you add up how many red numbers there are. So I know the total on the bottom is going to be 36. Now I have to figure out how many of those outcomes are greater than 8. 1, 2, 3, 4. I can't count the 8 because it's greater than 8. So 4, 5, 6. 7, 8, 9, 10. So 10 out of 36, 
So for the first one, we're going to do an example. One of these names is to be drawn from a hat. Determine each probability below. There's Mary, Jenny, Bob, Marilyn, Bill, Jack, Jerry, Tina, Connie, and Joe. So here's the probability that it's a three-letter name. So when I do probability of a three-letter name, I go N of three, the number of three-letter names, over the number of total. How many three-letter names are there? There's Bob and Joe. So there's two. Out of how many names total? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Out of ten. And then that reduces to one out of five. So you're going to try two all the way to seven. Try those out. So four letter names. So I'm going to do number of four letter names over the number of total. So it's going to equal how many four letter names are there? There's Mary, which is one. Bill, two. Jack, three. Tina, four. I believe there's four. Pardon me, we can four. Four out of ten. Which I can take a two out of both. Four divided by two is two. Ten divided by two is five. Probability of a name starting with a B. So we're going to do number of letters, name starting with B over the number of total. So there's Bob and Bill. There's two. Over the total, ten. That doesn't change. So I can take a two out. Two divided by two is one. Ten divided by two is five. Then I need the probability of a name starting with a T. There's just Tina. So the number of T's be weird. Number of names starting with a T over the number of total. I'll write out total this time. How many T's names? One out of ten. And it can't reduce, so we're done. Probability of a seven letter name. Mary is four. Jenny is five. Bob is three. Marilyn is seven. Bill is four. Jack is four. Jerry is five. Tina is four. Connie is six. Joe is one. So the number of seven letter names, number of seven over number total, would be one out of ten. Uh, name starting with S. So the number of starting with S over number total, there are zero starting with an S out of ten. So the probability of getting a name that starts with an S, there's a zero percent, zero probability, which makes sense. There's no names that start with an S. Name ending in Y. We have Mary, we have Jenny, we have Jerry, and that's it. So names ending in Y over any names total would be 3 out of 10. Can't reduce. So now we're going to look at the next one. One of these cards will be drawn without looking. We have a 10, a 4, and 7. A J, an S, a 9, a 10, a 2, an M, a 5, a 4, and a J. So probability of getting a 2. So how many cards are there? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's where we get the total number of the 12 on the bottom. How many 2s? 1. So it's 1 out of 12. And you're going to try 9 to 14. Number 9... Probability of getting a 5. This is an S, just so you know. And that's a 5. So there's one 5 out of 12 cards. Probability of getting a J. There are actually 2. So 2 out of 12. And then I can take a 2 out of 2, which is 1. And 12 divided by 2, which is 6. Probability of a number. 10 is a number. 4 is a number. 7 is a number. 9 is a number. 10 is a number. 2 is a number, 5 is a number, 4 is a number. So that's 8 out of 12. Take 2 out of, or 4 out of both. I am left with 2. 8 divided by 4 is 2. 12 divided by 4 is 3. Probability of getting a 4. There are 2 of them out of 12. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 12 divided by 2 is 6. So 1 in 6 chance getting a 4. A T. There are no T's. So 0 out of 12. So you have a 0% chance of getting a T. And then a letter. There's a J. There's an S. There's an M. There's a J. So there's 4 out of 12. Take a 4 out of each. I'm left with 1. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. 
One card is drawn from a well-shuffled deck of 52 cards. What is the probability of getting an ace? So we know the total is 52 cards. We have to decide how many aces are there. There's one in each suit. There's four suits. So there's four out of 52. Now I can take a four out of both of them. Four divided by four is one. 52 divided by four is 13. So I have a one in 13 chance of getting an ace. A face card, so a king, jack, queen. So on the bottom I have 52 cards, that didn't change. I have a king, a jack, and a queen of each suit. There are four suits. So four times three, king, jack, queen, is 12. So I can reduce it slowly if I want to. So 12 divided by two, I can get two out of it, is six. And then 52 divided by two is 26. And then I can keep going. Six divided by two is three. 26 divided by 2 is 13. So we have a 3 and 13 probability of getting a face card. A red 10. There are two suits that are red, and there's a 1 10 in each suit. So it's out of 52. There are two cards. If I reduce it by 2, 2 divided by 2 is 1. 52 divided by 2 is 26. And then not a diamond. So it's out of 52. There are 13 diamonds. Out of 52, if I go for 2 minus 13, there are 39 not diamonds. And 39 divided by 52 is 3 quarters, I believe. Because if I do 39 divided by 13, I get 3. If I do 2 divided by 13, I get 4. So you have a 3 and 4 chance of getting not a diamond when you're dealt a card. So now we're doing probability and odds. So complements, just like we had in the last unit. If we have an event such as pick a heart from a standard deck of cards, the complement of pick a heart is does not pick a heart. So if you pick a heart, there's 13 hearts out of 52, which reduces to 1 out of 4 when you take 13 out of 13 and 13 out of 52. Probability of not a heart. So all the not hearts are on top. There's 39 divided by 52 cards. If I take 13 out of each of them, it's 3 quarters. The complement is red as H prime or P of H prime. But we use it as this little dash. So the probability of picking a heart is 1 out of 4. The probability of not picking a heart is 3 out of 4. These are complementary events. Why are they complementary? Because they're opposites. So if I do a quarter plus 3 quarters, I actually get 4 quarters, which is 1. And if I have a probability of a 1, that's a 100% chance of happening. If you have complement events and you add them, you should get a probability of 1. Because if I add up the chances of not getting a heart to the chances of picking a heart, then I should really have a full 100% probability of getting a heart or not a heart. Because that's the, the, the complete complement event. So for any event where I take P of A, so like the probability of picking a heart, plus the probability of not picking a heart, the probability should always equal 1. So, if I want the probability of a complement of A, I should be able to go 1 minus the probability of A, and what's left over should be the complement of A. So let's look at number 1. Suppose that an event A has a probability of 3 eighths. What is the probability of the complement of A? Well, the probability of the complement of A is 1 minus the probability of A, right? So in this case, the probability of not A equals 1 minus P of A. So the probability of A not should equal 1 minus 3 eighths. If we type that into our calculator, we're going to get 5 eighths, but let's see. So we're going to go 1 minus 3 eighths. Now, if you have the old calculator, the only way your calculator knows it's a fraction is by typing it in brackets. And then you can go math, press the math button, enter, enter. So I just did math, enter on frac, enter, and it turns into a fraction for me. So I get 5 eighths. That's if you have the old calculator. If you have the old calculator, you have to go 1 minus and then 3 eighths in brackets so your calculator knows it's a fraction. And then you go math, enter, enter. If you have the new calculator, it shows the steps down here. I'm going to clear the history. 
If you have a new calculator, you can go L, or you can go 1, sorry, minus, and then your new calculators, if you have the new ones, and everyone can try this, TI-83s, you don't have a chance, but any of the other ones you might. If you go alpha, see it shows down here, I pressed alpha, and then you go Y equals, and then you go enter, it pops up a fraction. So down here it shows you I went 1 minus and then alpha y equals enter. That was what got me this fraction. And then I can go 3 and arrow down 8 and hit enter. And it gives me 5 eighths. So either way, the probability of not a is 5 eighths. So here I have, suppose that the probability of snow is 0 0.58. So probability of snow is 0 0.58. What is the probability that it won't snow or not snow? Well, what do we do when you have complements? If you have one of the complements, you can just take 1 and subtract the probability that it will snow. And what's left over, the probability it won't snow. So I do 1 minus 0 decimal 5, 8, and I get 0 decimal 4, 2. So now we're going to do odds in favor and odds against. The Saskatchewan Rough Riders were given a 25% chance of winning the Grey Cup this past year. So what is the probability the Rough Riders will win the Grey Cup as a fraction? Any percent can be written as a fraction. You just write it over 100. So if you want to make a fraction, a percent of fraction, you just write it over 100. So I get 25 over 100, and then I'm going to reduce it. 25 divided by 25 is 1. 100 divided by 25 is 4. Now your calculator will help you out if you're struggling. You can go 25 divided by 100. Ooh, I gotta put down my marker. I got 25 divided by 100. Enter. And then I go math. Enter, enter. It'll give it to me reduced. One fourth. But I would rather you do the actual math for it. So you get one fourth. What is the probability of the Rough Rider not winning the Grey Cup as a fraction? So if it's 25 out of 100 of them winning, then it would be 75 out of 100 of them not winning, which reduces to 3 quarters. And what does 3 quarters plus 1 quarter add up to? 4 quarters, which is 1. Okay. Now, paying close attention. This may be where I lose you. So when it says odds in favor, whatever comes after that comes first in a ratio. So odds in favor of winning, okay? If it says odds in favor of winning, winning comes first, so W, ratio dots, it's complement, not winning would come second. So if it's odds in favor, Odds in favor, whatever comes after it comes first. So if it's odds in favor of winning, winning comes first, not winning comes second. If it said odds in favor of not winning, then not winning would come first. So it's whatever comes after it comes first. So how many times do they win? We're going to fill it in. How many times do they win? 25. And then how many times do they not win? 75. And then I can reduce that. It would be 25 out of each. Now these should add up to your total. These should always add up to total. What's 25 plus 75? 100. What's our total? 100. So they do. So I know I'm right. It's odds always add to total. I'm going to put that in here. Odds add to total. Now I can reduce it. I can take a 25 out of both. 25 divided by 25 is 1, 2, the dots are 4, 
75 divided by 25 is 3. So the ratio um, for the odds in favor of winning is 1 to 3. So they have a 1 to 3 chance of winning. Now, when it says odds against, whatever comes next comes second. So if it says odds against, whatever word comes after comes second. So odds against winning. So winning comes second, and not winning, it's confident, would come first. So it's odds against, whatever comes after that comes second. So how many times do I win? 25. How many times do I not win? 75. Once again, these should, odds show what that's total. What's the total? 100, so I know I'm right. And then I can reduce it. Take a 25 out of 75, I get a 3. 25 out of 25 division, I get a 1. So it's 3 to 1 odds against winning. So odds in favor, whatever comes after it comes first. Odds against, whatever comes after it comes second. And then you always supplement with its um, complement. Next picture. So, the probability of event is defined as the number of ways the event can happen successfully divided by the number of ways it can possibly happen. The odds in favor of an event are defined as the number of ways the event can happen successfully divided by the number of ways it can fail to happen. So we do odds in favor, odds against. We'll talk about that after. We're going to go here to example one. A single die is, cost, is tossed, and they'll have to say what, how many sides it has. So this is a single six-sided die. What is the probability that the number of spots showing is a six? So remember when we do probability of a six, this hasn't changed from the last lesson. Probability of six is the number of sixes over the number total. How many sixes are there on a six-sided die? One. How many total sides are there on a six-sided die? Six. Perfect. One six. You're going to try B, C, and D. So we have the probability of even. How many? So we get number of even over number total. How many even sides are there on a dice? How many even numbers? Two, four, six. So 3 out of how many sides total? 6. I can reduce it. 3 divided by 3 is a 1. 6 divided by 3 is 2. So I have 1 out of 2 chance of getting an even. Odd. Number of odd divided by number total. This is actually 3 odd. 1, 3, and 5 out of 6 total, which is a half. Wait a second. The probability of an even is the same as the probability of getting an odd, and if I add them up, I get a total of one, which makes sense because the probability of even and the probability of odd are actually complement events, so they should add to a total of one. The probability of less than three. The probability of less <coughs> than three. Got a frog in my throat. Probability of less than three, so there's one and two. So there's the number of less than 3 over the number total. Number less than 3 are 1 and 2, so there's 2 out of the total of 6, which reduces to, you can take 2 out of both, one, 2 divided by 2 is 1, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now we're going to do odds against. Okay, so odds against. Whatever comes after it comes second. So everything that's listed down here is going to come second. So what are the odds against the number of spots showing 6? So we want odds against a 6. So what does that mean? 6 comes second and not 6 comes first. And these are not done in fractions. These are done in how many 6s and not 6s are there? So odds against a 6, 6 comes second, its complement comes first. How many not 6s are there? There are 5 not 6s. How many sixes are there? One, so it's five to one. And then we have odds against, whatever comes second, I mean, whatever gets said comes second. So odds against an even. So even would come second, and its complement, not even, which is also the same thing, odd, comes first. So how many not evens are there? 
One, three, and five. So there's three. How many evens are there? Three, which is one to one. So there's actually a one to one, and even a fair probability or a fair odds against drawing a not even and an even. It's one to one. Now we want odds against an odd. You try C and D. So odds against an odd. Odds against means whatever I say comes second. So odds against odd. Odd comes second, and its complement, not odd, comes first. How many not odds are there? Two, four, and six. So there's three. How many odds are there? One, three, and five. So there's three. So I have an equal chance, a one-to-one -one ratio, of having an odds against an odd. Now, odds against second, less than three. So less than three comes second. Not less than three, the complement of less than three comes first. So how many not numbers are not less than three? So three is not less than three. Four, five, and six. So there are four. Less than three, there's one and two. So there's two. You can take a two out of both of those. Four divided by two is two. Two divided by two is one. So I can reduce it to a two to one ratio of odds against a number less than three. So here we're going to have one letter is selected at random from the first 10 letters of the alphabet. So that's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. The first 10 letters. Okay? I want you to do these probabilities for A, B, C, and D. So we do the probability of a vowel equals the number of vowels over the number total. How many vowels are there? A, E, I. So there's three. How many letters total? Ten. Three out of ten, and I can't reduce it. The probability of a consonant, and we've already talked about what a consonant was. It's not a vowel, right? Number of consonants divided by the number total. So how many consonants are there? There's seven. If there's three vowels, there's seven consonants out of ten. Before E in the alphabet, so we want the probability before E. So it equals the number of letters before E over the number total. So how many letters are before E? A, B, C, D. So there's four. Out of how many letters total? Ten. Then I can divide by two on the top and the bottom. Four divided by two is two. Ten divided by two is five. In the word sidewalk. So there's an I in sidewalk, a D in sidewalk, an E, not a W, an A, an L, or K. So the four of the letters are in the word sidewalk. So we're going to do probability of sidewalk. I'm just going to say that. Equals the number of letters in sidewalk over the number total. So how many letters of the first ten letters of the alphabet are in sidewalk? Four. Out of how many letters? Ten. Divide by two. And we get two out of five. So we did odds against whatever came after the word came after that came second. Now we're going to do odds in favor of the of each event happening. So odds in favor. If it's in favor, it's going to come first. Favor first. So odds in favor of a vowel. So when it was odds against a vowel, a vowel came second. When it's odds in favor of a vowel, a vowel comes first, and its complement, a not vowel, comes second. So how many of those letters are vowels? Three. How many are not vowels? Seven. What does this always add up to? Total. How many total letters are there? Ten. If your odds add up to more than the total, you didn't do it right. So your odds always add up to the total. So it's 3 to 7. And I can't reduce it. That's it. So we want odds in favor of a consonant. So consonant comes second. Gosh, second. I'm doing odds against. Oh my good golly. 
Odds in favor of a consonant. If it's odds in favor, it comes first. So odds in favor of a consonant means consonant comes first, not consonant comes second. How many consonants are there? Seven. How many not consonants are there? Three. This adds up to ten, so I know I didn't make a mistake. You try C and D. So we have odds in favor of before E in the alphabet. So if it's odds in favor comes first. So we need before E in the alphabet comes first, and then not before E comes second. So how many are before E? Four. How many are not before E? Six. What does this add up to? Ten. How many letters are there? Ten. So I know it didn't make a mistake. I do have to do this over should have to total, remember? I do have to reduce it though. I can take a two out of both. Four divided by two is two. Six divided by two is three. In the word sidewalk. So odds in favor of being in the word sidewalk. So we want in the word sidewalk to come first. And then not in the word sidewalk to come second. I, C, E, and A are the ones in the sidewalk, in the word sidewalk. So there are four in the word sidewalk. And there are ten letters. So how many are not in the word sidewalk? Six, because these should add up to ten. They do. So now I can reduce it. Two to three. Take okay, a two out of four, four divided by two is two, six divided by two is three. Next page. Example five. Two dice are thrown. Refer to the two die roll chart to the right to decide the probability of each of the following events. So this is if I had a one, two, three, four, five, six. And on the other dice, I had a one, two, three, four, five, six. This is an outcome chart or an array. This shows all the different things. So here I would have rolled a one and a one. Here I would have rolled a one and a two. Here I would have rolled a one and a three. And it gives all 36 outcomes. So now we want the sum of the numbers showing is seven. So which of these would sum to seven? Well, six, one would sum to seven. Five, two would sum to seven. Four, three would sum to seven. Three, four would sum to seven. Two, five would sum to seven. One, six would sum to seven. So we want the probability. So we do probability of summing to seven equals the number of summing to seven over the number total. So how many of these outcomes sum to seven? Six. And how many outcomes were there? Six by six, so 36. And then I can reduce them. I can take a six out of both. And I get one out of six. I'm going to raise the rate. Okay. The next one they want me to do is the probability. And by they, I mean I want you to do. The probability that they show the same number. So 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5, 6, 6. So if you show a raise and they talk about two dice, you won't mess up your, prob your questions. Okay? It's very important to show the array. So both dice show the same number. So probability of same number equals the number of same number over the number total. How many same numbers are there? Six. How many total outcomes are there? 36. Which reduced to 1 over 6 last time. Same thing. You try C and D. So this one wants probability of different numbers. The number of different numbers over the number total. Now we could circle them all. Or we could say, hey, 6 out of 36 were the same number. So if I do 36 minus 6, I have 30 out of 36 that are different numbers. Like 1, 2, 2, 1, etc. Divide by 6. And I get 5 out of 6. So I have a 5 or 6 chance of getting rolling two dice with different numbers. Now this one's the sum of the numbers showing a 4 or a 6. So if I summed up the two numbers, I'd get a 4 or a 6. 3, 1, 2, 2, 1, 3 gets me a 4. 5, 1, 4, 2, 3, 3, 2, 4, 1, 5 gets me a 6. So I want the probability of a 4 or 6 equals the number of 4 or 6's sum. Because I want the sum of it. 
over the number total. So how many four or sixes are there? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight out of 36. I can reduce it, I can take a two out of four. I guess we got more, but I'm pretty good. Eight divided by two is four. 36 divided by two is 18. Oh wait, I can take out another two, so I keep going. Four divided by two is two. 18 divided by two is nine. So instead of taking a 2 and a 2 out, I could have taken a 4 out of the original. 8 divided by 4 is 2, 36 divided by 4 is 9. But even though I didn't take the biggest one out, I still, in two steps, reduced it. So here we want odds in favor. Favor comes first. So whatever they talk about is going to come first. So odds in favor, the sum of the numbers showing is a 7. <clears throat> so sum 7 is going to come first because the odds in favor comes first. Then it's complement, not a sum of 7, comes second. These should total to 36 because I have 36 different outcomes. So let's look. Sum of 7. There were 6 of them that summed to 7, right? 6 that summed to 7. And then that means there's 36 total, so if 6 summed to 7, 36 minus 6, 30 summed not to 7. What does this add up to? 36. So I know I didn't mess up because your odds should always add to your total. Now if I reduce them, 6 divided by 6 is 1. 36 divided by 6 is 5. So it's a 1 to 5 ratio. Odds in favor of showing a 7. Then we have odds in favor of both dice showing the same number. So if it's odds in favor of same number, same number would come first. Not same number would come second. We know from above that there are six of them that have the same number. And then how many don't have the same number? Well, there's 36 total. Take away six, there's 30 that don't have the same number. And what does this add up to? 36, so we know we didn't mess up. And then six to 30 reduces to one to five because our last one did. Now, odds in favor of showing different numbers. So it's odds in favor of different numbers, then different numbers comes first. So odds in favor of different numbers, then not different numbers, it's complement will come second. How many different numbers are there? So not the same number, there's 30 of them. And then how many not different numbers, so the same numbers, there's 6. So this would reduce 30 divided by 6 is 5, 6 divided by 6 is a 1. You try D. Sum of, so we want odds in favor, way up here still counts, odds in favor, so first, the sum showing a 4 or a 5, so that has to come first, sum of a 4 or a 6, I don't worry about 5. Sum of a 4 or a 6, to sum of a 4 or a 6, I don't see a 5 over here, I really want it to be 5. Sum of a 4 or a 6, and then sum of a 4 over 6, or, or a 6, not, so the complement is. Okay. How many sums of 4 and 6 are there? There are 8 of them, right? We figured it out. We go back and count them again. So there are 8 sums of 4 or 6. There are 36 in total. So if I go 36 minus 8, there are 28 that aren't a sum of 6 or 4. 8 that are a sum of 6 or 4. If I add them up, it should be 36, which it does. Can I reduce it? I can take it. 2 out of 8, I'm going to get a 4. I could have done a bigger number. 2 out of 8 is 28, I get 14. So I can keep going. 2 out of 4, I get 2. 14 divided by 2, I get 7. So I could have taken a 4 right out. But it doesn't matter if we do it in steps. Okay. Suppose the probability of event happening is 2 to 5. Probability is always, so this is number of event happening. And then what's always on the bottom one is the probability? The total. You're right. So we have to go odds in favor, whatever comes after this comes first. So odds in favor of the event happening. So event happening has to come first. And then event not happening comes second. So how many event happenings are there? Well, let's look here. There are two event happenings to how many not event happening? Well, these should add up to the total. 
And what's the total? The total equals 5. So how many not event happens are there? 3. Then we have B. What are the odds of gains? So whatever comes after this comes second. Odds against the event happening. So the event happening comes second. The event not happening comes first. So event happening is still 2. I'm going to put a 2 here. And odds still add up to the total. And the total in this case is still 5 because the bottom of probability is my total. So what number is it going to start with? A 3. Number 8. Suppose the odds in favor, so this is first, odds in favor of an event is 5 to 3. So this is the event happening. It's odds in favor of the event. And the 3 is the event not happening. And then, I always do this as well. I always do this so I don't mess up. This also tells me the total, when it's odds, equals 8. Because when we add them up, I can see my total. Okay? So now let's do some math. Is the probability that the event will happen greater or less than 50%? So we need the probability of the event happening. Well, we've done this a whole bunch of times. So we do probability... Oh. Probability event happening equals the number of event happening over the number of total. So the event happening is 5, it's listed right here, and then the total is the two numbers together, 8. And that's it. We'll go over the rest tomorrow.